Welcome back to part two of the Borg Eyewear FPV monocular or monocle or whatever you want to call it. And as you'll have seen in part one, the wiring was a bit dodgy. Didn't know which way was around for the polarity. So I'm taking it apart to have a look. And so the back comes off and inside we've got a circuit board there, which is a double sided load. That means it's got pieces on both sides. We've got looks like power supply circuitry there. And on the other side, we have like a large chip there which does probably most of the video processing that's not uncommon those chips are, uh, are quite common in LCD displays and all sorts of things so that's really the electronics on there and then we have another thing stuck right in there with another chip that'll be our actual display element there'll be a backlight probably an LED backlight and a LCD display which as we've already determined is QVGA in color which is very much like a 640 by 480 monochrome display except it's completely different so what I will do now is meter this out and find out which of these wires actually is the real negative and which is the real positive based on this little lead that we had with the system. So I will plug in this micro USB or this mini USB lead here. Here we go. <clears throat> and I'm going to I've got my multimeter on. Just excuse me while things move around here because this is a very stiff lead on this. Oops, there's my multimeter rubbing together. It's a very stiff lead they're using on the thing. It's not a very flexible one, which might be a bit of a hassle if you've got it hanging off your glasses because it's going to put extra strain on those little rubber bungs. But let's have a look here now. Get my multimeter leads in the right place. Um, so, yeah, the first thing to test, I probably didn't have to take this apart to do this test. I'm going to check the outside of this USB connector. It should be negative. And I'm going to check it out, check the leads out that come off that plug the voltage the JST connector if I can find it here it is now in theory I think also the outside this part of the jack should also be negative as it is there we go so let me get everything into shot here it's a bit hard when you're trying to do this as you can see the, the sleeve of the RCA or the, the sleeve of the jack connector there should be negative and it is to there so now I can tell which one of these power leads is actually the negative because it'd be the one that beeps when I put my lead on here it doesn't matter which way, around, which way around I put these I'm going to try it on the negative the black wire try and move it into shot it's hard when you're doing macro because everything is so there's such a small field of view for the camera but hang on I shall put my meter in here so now I'm up against the black wire as you can see and nothing so put it against the positive wire there we go so um, as I suspect it might be the case, black is positive and red is negative, which means if we plug in this other JST connector, the smoke would not have come out. But my goodness, it is so damn confusing. So what I'll do is I'll plug that in there. So there's our mismatched connection, as you can see. I'm going to put my meter on the negative lead of that JST. And it should beep when I put it onto the here. There we go. So yes, so the it wouldn't have exploded in flames, but that's just so confusing and just so wrong that I think what might have happened is the uh, they soldered the wires on and then realised, oh my gosh, they're the wrong way around. Quick, let's just change the pins in the JST. Uh, not the way to do things, people. That's bodge city. Anyway, what we'll do now is I'll put it back together and we'll see if it works. Right now I've got my mini quad over in the other side of the room pointing this way with its camera and I've got the quantum receiver going on the right channel so in theory if I plug this in now everything should work but you know you still gotta have your fingers crossed and hope the smoke doesn't come out I've got 4.4 volts on my power supply that should be if I should just take it down to the equivalent of a fully charged lipo which is 4.2 single cell lipo let's plug this baby in and see what happens if we do get the release of magic smoke no magic smoke but oh yes I see something inside the Yes, there is something going on in there. Now, what I'll try and do is get the camera all macroed up and we'll see if you can see it through the camera. Okay, here we go. This is going to be a bit hard to do because I'm going to try and get it in here, but we might be able to see some kind of... Here we go. It's coming in. Got to get it all lined up correctly. And where are we? It's... Um, you want to see the field of view? It's a bit tricky. You've actually got to turn this to get it lined up and I'm all shaky today, but you can see. Look, there's me. There I am way over there. The, the image looks very bright, far too bright. And it's like... It's not very clear, but that's probably because the camera is not designed to focus at these lengths. Here we go. We're getting better. I'm getting even closer, hopefully. There we go. You can see me. A lot of color fringing means the optics are pretty crap. Plastic lens, probably, and I'm shaking, so. Here we go. Hello. How are you? See that? I mean, I'm going to have to, um, 
I'll have to try it out. Looking through the camera doesn't really give you too much of an indication. There seems to be quite a wide field of view, as you can see. Now I'm going to take this out. I'm going to put on the glasses, take it out and have a look at it as you would use it. Yes, I am Locutus of Borg. Look at this, eh? Um, now, I've been playing around a little bit and I've noticed that it is quite difficult for your brain to cope with the two images. This doesn't seem to focus at the same point this does, even when I wear my regular glasses under this. So there's a bit of a focal difference and at least initially it's easier just to close one eye when you want to see the screen and mm, that's probably not achieving the results you want. But I'm going to have to spend some time to get used to this because I think it's probably a brain train thing. I have to train my brain. I am reasonably impressed with the resolution of the image. It's not as bad as I thought it would be. The colour fringing is quite bad. The cheap plastic lens will be producing that colour fringing. And as I say, I've just got some indoor footage to work with at the moment. It's raining outside. So over the Easter break, I will be taking this out and using it uh, in the field with the sun because it's supposed to be a good weekend for us and I'll go then I'll try that so early next week I'll give you a follow-up on this video to show you or to tell you what my thoughts are but to give you an idea the size of the image in my left eye is about the same size as with the original Dominator FPV glasses so it's not huge not a massive field of view but it is you know quite reasonable good size you can actually you know make use of it I think if it was any bigger with the low resolution it'd probably look quite crap because it'd get a bit pixelated so that's not a bad compromise the thing I don't like is this lead here is too stiff by far. Now I'm probably going to cable tie it up to the edge of the glasses here, which will help a little bit. And it's too short. Look, um, I guess, you know, I guess you have to use a nail gun and hammer that onto the or Velcro that to the side, other side of your head um, so that you've got the, uh, the ability to move around freely. But I have to extend this lead here because this will go off to my, we'll put a beck in here, this will go off to my little battery I'll be using. Probably run the receiver and the eyepiece from the same battery. I'll use a three cell battery with a beck for this. So that just means one battery probably um, taped to the side of my head, the receiver velcroed to the side of my head and the whole thing held in place with a couple of cable ties. I'll be sweet. Don't you worry. It'll look great. I could be starting a new fashion trend here. What do you think? Um, the, one of the bad things I suppose is that if you are one of those people who favours your or want to have it on the right hand side, well it's going to be upside down or you can have the cable snaking across your face which isn't very good. It has to go on the left hand side of your face may not be important, I don't know. My vision is just as bad in both eyes. So there you go. Yeah, um, so far so good. Is this coming loose? No, it's still tight. Um, if you've got really small glasses like mine, not these ones, but my usual ones, you may find that there's not enough room to position the eyepiece in the right place. It's quite critical in terms of that positioning because, oh, look, it's coming off. <laughs> so yeah, that, I'll have to check and see how well it stays attached too because that just sort of, they, they gradually let go. Do you like my new look? Isn't that sweet? Um, they gradually let go, so I'll have to check and see. Might have to put some other, perhaps a cable tie or something. A little bit of work required here. Maybe just a little bit of lick and spit on there before you put it on, because not much good if it falls off while you're using it. But the cable, tie, probably the weight of the cable was doing that. If I had that cable tied back there, but it's so stiff. If they made a silicon cable, it would be brilliant, because then it'd be nice and flexible. So, yeah, I mean, it is. Um, I checked the price, and it is 72 US dollars. So that gets up there when you start talking US Canadian or. New Zealand pesos so it's going to have to perform pretty well to get my stick of approval but so far it's not a complete waste of money as far as I can see it does seem to work I'm just gonna to have to take it out there and try it out in the real world and we'll see how it goes so thanks for watching stay tuned next week early next week after I've had a chance to use it on the weekend I'll tell you my final thoughts but there you go so um, what an exciting and interesting review this has been due to the Interesting way the Chinese do their wiring. Thanks for watching. Questions, comments in the usual place. Now it's time for me to get back to the bench and actually get back to tidying up. Still so much mess to tidy up here before I can um, really get productive in the year to come. So thanks for watching. Spot you later.